fell off. Must have never had Nigerian gel off. Ali stick and go. Mix it up like Riddick Bow. Mix holy filled with smoke and Joe. What's that? What's that? Travis got two fights, two wins, and KJ got no fights, no losses. Tunde was the first guest on the show. You know that we only sit down with bosses. Wax on, wax off, Mr. Miyagi, master the craft like Marcus. Please welcome those boxing out of the red corner. College, money, May, glamorous thing. Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of Undefeated, the red corner. Bro, don't just say another episode, fam. This is, <laughs> episode, bro. this is a mad edition, fam. I can't even believe right now I'm here with the one and only, fam. But anyway, we'll get there. Let's we get, get there. Let's get it. Let's build. That, I wanted to start low and then we build. <laughs> no, no, you can't start low and build, fam. Can't you see the titles behind the man, fam? Move I hate it. <laughs> Leave it. Come on. Oh, snap the sauce. I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> Go to you, bro. Let's talk. All right, bro. Tell me, what's your tail of the tape? My tail of the tape, you know me, fam. Oh and oh, bruv. Never mm. lost. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Ask me again because I wasn't ready. Why well, you're nervous? Well, I was making you nervous, yeah? Let me speak. <laughs> All right, All right let, me, let me start. First, oh. belt, first belt, English title. Come on. Second belt, WBC silver title. <laughs> After that, WBA international title. Let's go. Oh, snap. That's awesome. Then, after that, I won the WBC international title. Oh, my days. <laughs> Not done yet. Then I vacated it, and I won the WBC international title again. No, no, no. <laughs> all right. All right. I feel rubbish about my one now. Travis, ask me. Ask me about my situation. Oh, all right, bro. What's your tail of the tape? Gee, I'm O and O, bro. Never fought, never lost. But if I did, someone gets knocked out. And it's not me. What is... Travis, what is your tail in the tape? Don't don't I'm mess around, bro. Two and zero with a fifty percent knockout rate. You Half the man that entered the ring with me, they mm. left on their back, bro. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, listen, we're not here about us. They know what they know our tail in the tape. They know who we are. We got a very special guest, people. We this do. is a, this do. is an epic episode for me um, because this is the. E- enigmatic fam this guy you we don't know we don't know we finally get to sit down and say who is this man but we got the one and only special o'hara davis let's go thank you for having me guys thank you for having me oh Oh, man thanks for coming through man really happy to have you bro um what we like to do yeah we like to go straight back to the beginning yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. we want to know the first introduction you had to boxing. Like, what was that that first moment you was in the gym and it's like you fell in love with the sport? No, I didn't. I never started in the gym. Um, okay. I, started in, I started in a youth club up in Hackney. Okay. All right. Uh, this is when I just got arrested for possession of Class A drugs. I was about 16 years old. And then not long after that, I was back on the roads got arrested, they were trying to charge me with attempted murder. I was, um, oh, yeah. yeah, I was 16 years old at, um, at this point in life, in the night of Crown Court. And that court case I had went on for a number of years. And so obviously I got kicked out of my school because the person that I stabbed, he was a member of the school that I was in, of the secondary school. And so I was just on the roads, I was just on the streets, you know, doing the same old, can I swear? You can, bro. Be real, bro. I was doing the same old shit that all those guys on the road do. But mm. then I used to go to, it was like a little youth club um, in my local area and had a boxing coach used to come in every Wednesday. Mm. He used to come and do pads like, like with all the guys. And I never I never went to the class. I was like, nah, boxing, that ain't a part of me. For the first two weeks, I never went there. And then on the third week, someone just said, just go give it a go. Just go give it a go. I thought, okay, cool. Well, fuck it. And I went in there and I went there every week from that moment. I just remember there was like 15, 20 of us. Everyone put on gloves. It was like a very rumble in the hall. Everyone hitting everyone. <laughs> it was a mad thing. It was a mad thing. Everyone hitting everyone. People calmed down. It was mad. But what I saw, like, eventually there was like 30 people there. And then it went down from 30 down to 20 down to 15 to 10 to 5 until it was only me going there and mm. every Wednesday it was just me there and everyone else they come for a few times and a few minutes hit the pads and then go but I was the only one that was consistent with it and what was I the thing that kept you there? 
What was the thing like, that made you keep coming back? What was the reason that you, because there was 30 men and 30 yeah. men the one. Yeah. What was the reason that kept you coming back? I just liked it. I liked it when he used to hold the pads and like, I get the gloves, I just hit the pads, bang, I hit the pads, I can hear the noise and I, it just made me feel so good um, as I hit the pads. And so I just went back there every 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 Wednesday. It was it was a uh, it was it was it was just a passion that I had from mm. the first I put on a pair of gloves. I love oh, it. So, so like, let me like let's let's get into your your mindset at the time because obviously you were on the roads living a certain mm. way. Do you know what I mean things were on top, and you find boxing, and I imagine there's something about boxing that helps you kind of move away from that lifestyle. What was what was that? Don't know. I think um, when I found myself improving, we used to go on the we used to go on the beep test. Have you ever heard of the beep test? Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember the boxing coach because as the as that youth club, as they couldn't afford him no more, he took my number and he took me to the actual boxing gym. And um, any time that I would do the beep test, and first I'll get level six, and then I'll get level six point three. I'm like, shit, I'm making some progress. I'm actually doing good. I'm actually. Yeah. I'm good at this, and then I've done level six point five. I then level seven. I'm like, bang! I want to be that school. I want to be that school. And it was always about improving. But that was the first time that I learned that I'm good at something because mm. where I'm from, how I was raised, everyone you get told you're ever going to be a gangster or you're going to be in jail, you're going to be dead. No one sees anything for you, and that's what you think of yourself. So when I first went down a boxing gym, and I was like, I can improve. I'm actually good at this shit. Mm. I never. Visions myself going pro. I never thought I, I was I was ever gonna go pro. Never. It was never about money going pro. Nothing. It was about fame, mm. glory. It was all about I found something that I love doing, and I just kept on going back there every week. So talk me through what was going on with the family members. Obviously, you're going through the court case. Mm. You're in and out and stuff. What was what was their vibe in that moment? I've got two we... brothers. I've got yeah. two brothers. My brothers were like really smart people, like in college university passing all their grades um they were staying on campus at one point so they weren't really at mum's house or up um mm. you know but uh when i started boxing they were there for me and they supported it they supported my grind like it wasn't there's nothing to like support really because i wasn't doing anything it was more oh, i was found something that he likes doing and i'm happy for him yeah 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 and the yeah. passion wow yeah, right. foundation. But me and my brothers are quite different. There was they went down the academic route, and I went down a boxing route. Was there ever a moment when you'll get the comparisons when the family members oh. look at them? Because I know that happens in in just I would say in just households around the world. I want to say because I don't I've never grown up in a white household, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. I know in a black household, it that is the standard. Look at them. Look at this one. Why mm -hmm. are you like this? Well, did you ever get that one? No, I never felt that. Maybe it could have happened behind my back, but I never felt I never felt that from anyone. Um, you know, if anyone I'm closest to in my family is my older cousin, and she's the only one that I'm really, really, really tight with. Like I'm yeah. close, I'm close to like my I like my family, but my cousin was the one that I was really like tight with. But I remember back in the day, Jim used to cost me three pounds to go there, and sometimes I used to go to her, and she, she, and then she used to go and and give me the three pounds to go gym. Um, mm. When my Oyster card finished, because you know you have a free Oyster card until you're 18. Yeah, yeah. I used to use her Oyster card to get on a bus sometimes. Wow. And she used to give me three pounds to go gym. And she was. All, it was never about me going through. It was always about you find something you like doing. I'm going to support you. But I never mm. felt like mum or anyone looked at me as and tried to compare me and my brothers. I felt like we was all looked at quite evenly because. We all come from the same area. Like we like we all in a gutter still. And even though they was going down the academic route, they were still in a gutter, just like mm. I was. Mm. Yeah, I understand exactly. What you're no, I feel you. So, so like, how, how did you find like turning turning your back to the lifestyle as boxing was progressing? Because obviously now you're going through the amateurs, you're climbing the ranks, and mm. now people are talking to you differently in the boxing gym. Do you know what I mean? Men are like, nah. Do you know what? You could actually go somewhere. Like, how yeah. did you feel leaving the old lifestyle behind whilst you're making new moves in a new direction? It was more, it was like a natural change. It wasn't a thing that happened in a day. It was like a okay. natural change. I remember, like, I stopped smoking weed when I was, like, 18. I used to smoke a lot of weeds, a lot of cigarettes. And I remember one time, 
I, st- I didn't smoke for like three weeks. I was making so much progress on the beat test. And then one day I smoked and then my beat test score went right back down. And I was like, shit, I've got to choose one. I either the smoking or, or the boxing. Mm. And I went back to the hood. I was like, this is my last one. I took my ass, I, I smoked my last straight. That's it. I, I haven't, I haven't smoked since. And it was more like a gradual chain that happened over time. And people in the gym, even though I was doing good as an amateur, I don't think anyone really thought that I was going to be the person that I am. Mm-hmm. I don't think I was ever going to go pro. People, I mean, I used to, I, I had, I used to have no life. I had nothing. I, I quit selling drugs. So I went to box. People in the gym used to look at me like a lot of people used to look at me and. Some of them, I like, would even say, "Go out and get a girlfriend. Go out and get a life. Don't you go yeah. out? Don't you go on club? Don't you like? You ain't got no life." And people used to look at me as I'm um, like I'm weird. Mm. And I remember me in the gym, me and some guy in the gym were having like a friendly argument one time, and then he looked at me and he said to me, "Well, at least I've got a life. At least my life ain't in the gym." And you know, mm. I used to feel down sometimes. Other people used to come to him. They had cars. It weren't great cars, but they had. But at least they had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a car to get there. Come with girls, you know. They they used to live their life. I I never did, and I don't think anyone thought that I was going to be the person I am. Is it? So I want to. I'm. Let's look, go back here. Yeah? And that moment when you're going to turn pro, did you go and speak to your cousin? You know the cousin I was giving the three pound. Yeah. What was that conversation like, or the or the day that you finally? You won that first fight as a pro. What was that conversation like? Between me and my cousin. My cousin didn't mm. really care. Even up to now, she still don't really she actually still don't really care. I go around the house sometimes. We don't talk about boxing. She don't really like the time when I said that I'm gonna go pro. I don't think I even spoke to her about it. I think that she saw it on Facebook somewhere. She like she's been to only one of my fights as a pro. Literally, literally been to only one of my fights. Like, mm. This boxing stuff don't really care. So she's someone that always loved me for me. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The boxing stuff. So I would I say that she's proud of me. She's not proud of me because I'm doing good in boxing, but she's but she's proud of me because she saw what I was involved in before boxing and the way that I've changed my life around mentally. I've and I've, and I've just literally grown so much mentally, and she's just happy to see that development, the, that change in me. Yeah, wow. oh, I hear that. Yeah. So now the thing is, it's mad because I I always reference you in these boxing conversations about boxers creating a personality to allow yeah. them to progress their career in a bigger yeah. way than boxing can allow sometimes. Because yeah. you know you was on the small hall show circuit for for a period of time. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it's like you know you you were a prospect, but it wasn't like you had the backing of the industry, yeah. the game, and then suddenly. It was all about what Ahara said. Mm-hmm, yeah. Like, yeah. T- talk us through that. T- talk us through that time. Well, when me and Tunde, because obviously I'm not sure if you guys know, but he was my first coach when I turned pro. Okay. okay. I was fighting on small hall shows. My first and second fight on Steve Goodwin shows. My second fight, I made about 100 pound. I made about 180 pound. And you know how it works on the small horse circuit is obviously you, you got to sell to fight. If you can't sell any tickets, you don't get on the shows. Or if you can't sell, then you have to pay to fight. And my first fight was on April. It was in April 2014. I sold a hell of a lot of fight tickets, so I made about 2K, I think, for that fight. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> we have to drop a bomb for that. <laughs> and then I fought again in June, two months later. I made about £100. Why? Because my ticket sales went right down. Because everyone that came out to the first fight said that they're going to come again if I fight again. But I fought two months after, and these people they can't afford forty pound, forty pound, eighty pound, hundred yeah. pound every yeah, other month. Regular. Mm. So I remember I going to meet the guy, the boxing promoter, and he was like, "Maybe you got to fight once every six or seven months. Mm. You can't sell enough tickets." And I was thinking, "Damn, what am I gonna do?" Um, but obviously at that time, me and Tunde, we were going through some stuff. You know, I, you know, we was like we used to clash in the gym all the time, so we parted ways. And then I joined Tony Sims' gym. But Tony Sims, him and Eddie Hearn, I like that. They've got a real good link. So yeah. after, I started boxing on matching shows. And I feel like it came at the right time because um, I was going to fight every six or seven months. And I can't, so like, so was, I this, was, was this literally after your second fight? You, after you my tra- second fight. Right, okay. Oh, so wow. How, how long was you with Tunde then in that? 
was it a long for years because I trained with him during some of my amateur boxing career. Me and Tunde were together from, and he just introduced me to Tunde. Um, mm. I think 2000, probably 2011, no, 2012, I think it was. Okay. 2012, and, wow. you know, I was with him, he, so, he, so he would literally train me in a gym free of charge. He didn't charge us free of charge for like in two years. Me, and the Yards, Junior Sabo, he had a few of us in the gym and he trained all of us for years. But um, now, How was that conversation then? Because I can imagine you're, you turn pro, right? And then after t- you've, you've left after, t- what, two professional fights or something? Yeah. Mm. So that was that like a tough thing to re like was that conversation? I, I can't imagine how that conversation goes because training me for free and then yeah. now it's, like, <laughs> it's time to make it and it's like raw big man. I'm there were no conversation. Me and Tony had an argument. Like, we used to clash in the gym quite a bit. We used to right. listen. Like, the first time when I joined this gym, we used to clash all the time. And then sometimes like we'll find the right balance and then we'll be cool. But then we'll clash again and something goes wrong. So when we like parted ways it was like it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't on good terms on my part he, mm. he might say it wasn't good terms on his part but <laughs> I think I don't think it, I don't think it, I don't I don't think it was I think it was bad terms on mine and on his part but what I have to give him credit for is that I signed a managerial contract with him for I think three years yeah. and and we ended about three months into that so he phoned me up he was like listen tomorrow phone the boxing board and then tell them that I'm not going to manage you no more and I'm going to release you from your boxing contract. Wow. And that's a good thing. I imagine yeah. trading someone for all those years and then, bang, releasing them, free of charge. And, you know, some people say, you can say what you want about him, but him doing that, I've always got to say good things about him. I've got to yeah, give him... Got to, let, let me drop a bomb for him still. Let me, he deserves that one still. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man, that's, that's hard. That's, yeah. We've had, because we've heard some sad, we've heard some crazy stories of yeah. people that are still stuck in, in deals. Right. People still paying getting, 20% and the, paying the, 20%. the manager's not even involved. There's never been to no. a spa. I haven't seen mm. him in time. So, so yeah. tell us, so talk, let's talk about the early stages of the Tony Sims, Eddie Hearn journey because mm. like even, even though you was with that camp, it didn't feel like you were getting the back in the port, like your name weren't really moving like that. So what was that? How, how do you find when it? I first, when I first joined that gym, you got other fighters in the gym as well. There was like probably seven, eight, seven to eight of us. I was getting paid less than what everyone else was getting paid for their fight. Obviously, Eddie Hearn, in the early parts of your boxing career, when you sign to Eddie Hearn, you get paid per round. So for a four rounder, you get paid for a four rounder, for a six rounder, you get paid for a six rounder, eight rounder, same thing. So what everyone else will be getting paid for a six rounder, I was getting less than what they was getting. Mm. I was, I was getting like half of what of, of what of what they was getting paid. Okay. But to me, it was okay because in my mind, it was a lot of money because it was more than I had. I had. I had yeah, had seen. of course. It was mm. More than what I had seen, but I knew what they were earning. But I never, I never, I never worried. I said, if I know, if I'm as good as, as I think I am, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get there one day, and I'm gonna be getting a lot more than they're getting. I may be getting a hell of a lot one day. Is mm. that so, what the character was born then? In terms of now, I've got to do more. To gain the attention, I don't think it was. I think it was more. I'm a listen. I'm a WWE fan. I've been watching wrestling from like Makes from sense. back in the day, like from when I was a kid. Because like, <laughs> I, I remember up, Blonde O'Hara Davis randomly on the yeah. Twitter time that I was like, "What?" <laughs> I grew up watching fighters like Muhammad Ali, Floyd, yeah, Floyd, and I looked up to these guys so much. And I feel like when I first turned pro, I just wanted to be like all of these guys that I look up to, all of my boxing yeah. idols and. After watching WWE, I want to be like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Turn Hill. Turn Hill. <laughs> do, massive, do some mad shit. Like, that's what it's all about. And I just wanted to be like all these people that I have looked up to for all these years. But at the same time, it was still marketing me well because everyone spoke about me and everyone knows who I am, mm. how I acted. And I feel like that's an important part in this in, in, in this game. I know certain I know certain fighters and they're so good they can fight. I speak to these guys all the time. I, I, I know I know so many fighters and they follow me sometimes. I speak to them and they're like, I'm trying to get a shot, I'm trying to get a shot, I'm trying to get a shot. They got all the skill, all the talent. They're not getting a shot. Why? Because, they, because they're not pushing themselves out there. Promote yourself. Mm, that's real. Do you reckon looking back though, do you reckon how you was talking? It hurt your career by any chance. Hurt me how? 
Well, this is the thing, because for me, I'll be honest, yeah, when I first met you, I heard the way you was talking, and I said, I like that. I like that energy. Even was at a rave together. I think you, you had your belt still. I was, I was doing a comedy. It was a comedy show. I think you came and stuff. But I got a picture of you. It's mad, but you probably want <laughs> to remember. Huh? Was it Shoreditch? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Annie there as well. Wasn't it? Wasn't Annie there as well? I can't remember, but I remember seeing you. The belt was there, and we took yeah. a picture together back in by its time ago. You didn't have the facial. I don't think I had the facial hair like that. Like so, <laughs> it, it was mad. But then, so I saw your character, and I said, "I like how he's giving it up." Mm. But then, after we took, after we had the bumps in the road, and it never went after like Liverpool, and then just I felt you changed, and I felt raw. Did I? really meet the real O'Hara if that that's mm -hmm. how I felt so I was like mm -hmm. this feels too weird because now the person that I'm meeting and even the person that you speak when we talk now I didn't yeah. meet this guy when you first mm -hmm. started you know mm -hmm. what I mean I, I I felt I met someone completely different now I'm getting to see the real you mm -hmm. and I, I don't want to say the real you because that could have just been you at the time but th so that's why I asked the question do you reckon it hurt you or do you reckon you would if you could go back you would have done it in a different way. No, nah, if I could go back, I wouldn't change anything. The way that everything's gone, I've learned from all the mistakes that I've made, the things that I've said. I've learned, I've learned from them. And sometimes it's like, if you didn't go through these things, you wouldn't be the person that you are. And mm -hmm. if I change anything, it might change now. And, mate, I love my life right now. I'm about to get my first, I'm at my first flat. I've got the mortgage off for a few hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mate. A hard I mean, landlord, you know. I'm like, no, if I didn't even say some of that shit a few years ago, <laughs> yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be the person that I am now. Yeah. So I remember, like, there's there was a moment when it, when I started to realize, right, Ahara Davis is getting up there in terms of like the clout and everything. Like, it was the Derry Matthews fight. Yeah. Now yeah. that was like, I think he did that speech, and we just like boxing needs guys like me. Like yes. you went in with the promo. And I Man. remember thinking, nah, this guy's <laughs> he's captivating everybody right now because if you if you don't like a horror, you're still talking about a horror. If you yeah. like him, you're gassed by this energy right now. So it was just this great cycle. And I yeah. think was it around about that time when you and Floyd got into an argument? Yeah. Talk it's to us about how that was like, because obviously you're in the height of like hype now, isn't it? and now Floyd is yeah. chatting back and forth. Man's in a press know. conference. I just want to say this: you're in a press conference with glasses on, though. Even yeah. stuff like that, I was like, yeah, this guy, we need it. But carry on going. I have a shirt and tie glasses on. Like, the whole thing was, I want, I, I've, I've got to be different. I've got to show that I'm different to all these guys. Like, you, when you walk into a room and you've got a thousand people, you've got eight different fighters. If I want to if I want to be part of all you guys, I've got to stand out, not just in the ring, outside the ring too. So I've got to do some, I've got to do some weird shit. So I do, I put on a shirt and tie. Ain't anyone else got on a shirt and tie? Put on some, some full trades. And not only that, put on some headphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. That Come on. People, people look at me and say, oh, he's weird as shit. But at least they're saying something about me. Yeah. So that, so that was the whole thing in the conference. But then when me and Floyd had our thing, like, I've, listened, I've always looked up to Floyd from when I was a kid. Uh, I remember I went there as a fan. I wanted to go and get a picture with him. Like He's been like my idol from when I was young. And when I met up with him, he started trying to compare me to one of his fighters, Tank Davis. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. I've got no, I've, I've, I've got no issue with that. But at the end of the show, I said to myself, "Listen, a thousand people come in that you've got a picture with him. I need to stand out. How am I going to stand out?" And I said, "I said, you know what? He said something earlier. Even though I didn't mind it, I'm gonna make it seem as if I didn't like it and start an argument." <laughs> that got about, that got about two million views on up on YouTube. Everyone spoke at me. I was the talk of the town. So um, that was why because I know I'm not in against him, but mate. I can't be the same as all these other guys. Otherwise, I'm gonna be like these guys, and mm. I've got to stand out if I want to be different. <laughs> so, what did Floyd say to you that got you to the point where you're like, you know what? I need to respond to that. Still, he didn't say anything. I just thought, you know what? I need to stand out from all these guys. That was it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> he said something to me a bit earlier. He tried to compare me to his fighter tank, and I was like, I'm just thinking, man, I don't mind that. This guy's probably fucking the next best thing. But, mate, I've, I need to, I need to, I need to, I need to stand out. And imagine, imagine if you wake up in the morning and you see O'Hara and Floyd had an argument. Imagine them, my oh, name, right. my name in the same sentence. Imagine. Imagine oh, them, my name. Like, listen, listen, 
Flo is the best boxer to ever lace on a pair of gloves. He is my idol. Imagine your idol. Imagine someone that looks up to like anyone, Mike Tyson, Michael Jackson. Imagine seeing your idol, but imagine arguing with them and then other people put their name and your name in the same sentence. Come on, it don't get better than that. I'm looking at Sky Sports next day. I'm looking at Sky Sports next day. They got my name and they got Flo's name in the same sentence. I'm like, hell yeah. Listen, man. Mm. What was that conversation with the man them though? Because obviously you go home and like people they haven't spoken to in a long time are seeing yeah. Floyd O'Hara. Yeah, yeah. Same sentence. What was those conversations? Because I could imagine the phone was ringing. Uh, I, I, I've always been the kind of I'm always I'm I've always got a tight circle. So a lot of these guys that text me and phone me, man, I don't even I don't even get back to most of these guys. But yeah. my brothers and that like my brothers know the deal. My brothers know the deal. They know what I'm about. So yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, I saw you argued with Finger with a fly, and I was like, "Yeah," and then that's about it. No one's really, <laughs> trying, to, no one's really like trying to ask me too much questions because he's like, "I know what it is anyway." I don't really care. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Are you know what's, <laughs> do you know what's so funny about you, like, yeah? Even though how you make the family sound, everyone just kind of chill about stuff. Even the fact that your your cousins come to like one fight and she's been giving you yeah. the three pounds and stuff. <laughs> Like, right, it's, like, it's Floyd, didn't it? Just do your thing, bro. <laughs> That's mad. Yeah, like my family's um, like if I need anything, they're there for me 100. Yeah, support 100. But they're not really about all the hype. Like yeah, they're not trying to be known. They're just, they're just trying to keep the self on like a little D-lo. And yeah. Do you ever have any moments? Do you ever have any moments where it, it gets quite surreal? Like the night when you fought Derry Matthews, it was David Hay, uh, Bellew won, and you're like chief yeah. support. Yeah, yeah, you're backstage. You, you, you're backstage. You just have one of the moments where you just like, right, like, nah. um, me and David here on the line. Or like, do you? <laughs> nah. Nah? I'll get there though. I'll get there. I've never had a surreal moment for the day Matthews fight, but when I with that with that whole conference that I had, that was my dream to have a conference like that where everyone hates you. Cause that's what Ali Floyd had. That's mm. what I'm like, mm. like when I fought him, I could, I fulfilled a lifelong dream. Um, after that, after that, after that fight was done. My love for the game went honestly. My love for the sport of boxing, mm. which has been seen a horror day like that ever since to this day. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't seen that guy to this day. And the only surreal moment I had was after the fight where I started getting attention from girls now because, mate, I've been in the hood my whole life, then I've been poor my whole life, and then when I got signed to Eddie Hearn, I won't really, I won't really make a noise. People didn't really give me attention, but when I fought that fight and I won, bro. My phone popped off. I got a bit of money. I went and bought myself a decent Audi A5. I had a little red Peugeot I used to drive. Paid about five hundred pounds for it, or thousand pounds for it, something like that. But imagine driving an Audi A5, yeah. and then you get the connection from girls, like mad to. And then you have with different <laughs> girls, and I'm, I'm booking different, a few different places to eat, mm. different hotels up in central London, and I'm getting attention from girls. And that's when I was like, damn. Look at this hot girl. I'm, I'm in bed with this girl. Like, look at this hot girl. I'm in. <laughs> like, I'm, 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 I'm in the dreams of this in years that like, this girl would want to be in bed with me. Mm-hmm. And she, having an idea if I... But the mistake I made was when I thought Dave Matthews, I was in March. And I thought, Taylor, it was in July. I wasn't... I didn't have time to enjoy the new life. After Dave Matthews is when I hit a new level. And I didn't have time to enjoy that new level before I thought... Taylor, I think it was like a month or t- a month and a half after after that fight, I had to get I had to get back in the gym and back yeah. the, and back in the camp. But guess what? I was still living that life after after gym was done. Instead of me going home, sitting down trying to watch this guy that I'm gonna fight, guess what I've done? When I meet some different girls, restaurants, hotels, and for that fight, I never watched him not once. I never watched my opponent, Ooh. not once. Right for that fight, I had no game plan. Whenever I never watched him once, it was just like I felt a lot. I felt a love for the game. I just thought, you know what? I'm getting about 100 G's for this fight. It is what it is, man. I mean, I get, I get a bit, of, I get paid a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you man, think that you had enough to beat him um, without? Because obviously, not watching him, did you feel that you had the confidence to still go and get it done on the night, or what? Did you just know it was potentially gonna go this way? I, it's probably. I have no idea. I thought I was gonna win. I thought like it's mad because when everyone gasses you up, yeah, yeah, like sometimes it's a bit deceptive. You feel like it's impossible to beat me. I'm not gonna lose. I won all these fights, and I'm just gonna go in there with this fight again. 
And then when I lost, I was like a wake up call. I was like, shit, I'm not actually invincible. Mm. Mm. So, so like the lead up to that fight, it was different because one, it wasn't, it wasn't a matchroom show. Two, in all the like the press conferences, you were laid back. You weren't talking. He would push you and try and engage with you. You wouldn't bite. And I was thinking, what's going on? Because I'm thinking the Ahara I know is not having any of this at any point. But somehow yeah. you just seemed chilled. What was the mind? What? Why did you do that? It was on Channel Five, and I went trying to hype up their show. I thought, "Fuck this, my god!" And the thing is, I saw. I think Barry McGuigan <laughs> said that to you, didn't it? He said, "You're not trying to promote this thing," and you were just like, <laughs> mate, it was no, tweet, "No nothing, man." I thought, "Fuck this, well, I ain't trying to hype up this show. Fuck these motherfuckers, Channel Five." <laughs> Listen, I thought, mate, you push me. I say, okay, you abuse me, I say, I say, I say, and I just say, okay. But even so, like, if that was before, if that was when I fought Debbie Matthews, if that was up on Channel 5, I say that, but then if it was a few months earlier, before, I would have, I still would have come out of my shell. But the fact that I was, I was able to be contained in that shell shows that I was losing, I was losing my love. I want game. to ask you about that. So you say you was losing your love for the game. What? Because you said, what was it? What on the way in, on the way out, you just said, you know, I just don't feel the same about this. What was that? Did you ever kind of find out what, what that feeling was about? Yeah, I know. I, I, I know what it was about. Like. When I started, when, I, when you started getting attention from girls and shit, and, you, and you're driving a decent Audi A5, mm. and you got, then you got over ten k in the bank, mate. You got over ten k in the bank. Imagine that, seeing two numbers and then the little. Come on, zero, zero, zero. Like, hell yeah, fucking yeah. 10, K, 10, 15 K in a bank? Come on, man. Yeah. Like, it's different when you're born up in a city, but when you come from where I'm from, mate, mm. if your bank account is not on overdraft, <laughs> you're doing good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know the ones when you check your balance, but you close your eyes, you're not ready for it. Like, like, mm, yeah. you know? Yes. <laughs> it's the ones where you don't um, want to check your yeah. balance. You just live. So, um, <laughs> I feel like I was living, I was, I thought that's, that was when I had a life. Like, that's when I had a life. Like, before that, I never had a life. I never had no life. I was always too poor to do anything. And I was more hungry. But after Dave Matthews, I wasn't hungry no more. Mm. And so I wasn't, I wasn't hungry. I'm like, mate, I'm getting girls. They're like, cool. I'm like, come on. I've got, I've, I've got a decent car. Was it the people, did people around you change? Did your, did your circle of friends suddenly expand with the new, the new, like, clout? No, it wasn't my circle of friends. I thought I, I was always, I've always had like the same friends. It were like James Argent, Anthony Yard, my brothers, my cousin, a few others. The only, I don't, I don't my, my circle is really small, so they was always around me. But people online like that to gas you up, and then when you go to like your old hood or to your old youth club, and people before it was like, oh, how's things are horror? Now that like, how is things are horror? <laughs> <laughs> how is things? Like listen, man, like this guy can be on the phone. I would pass. Hey, hey, hey. One second. Wait, I'm going to call you back there. One second. Phone call. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, Come on. yeah, yeah. No, that? One second. Make it the sound's just done a madness. One second. Let's just... Can you hear that, Travis? Yeah. The whistling. I can. You can't hear it, Travis. I think it could be your thing, you know, and Travis on your side. Mute yours and then come back. Mute it. Yes, yeah, yeah, so... Whistling? Yeah, like a proper feedback lag. Oh, snap. Um, we can we can we can sort it out. Do you know what you do? I haven't changed anything. Take it out. I think it was just on that moment. It was just on when he um, it's still ringing now. It's like what happened last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, I'll leave and then come back in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do that. Yo, now did, what, bro? Conversation is crazy. I didn't realize that there was so much more. Yeah. See, you know what I mean? Because even when, yeah. again, like, oh, I don't even want to say this when he's before he comes back, but the way you present, you wouldn't have known that you've gone through all this, like, yeah, yeah. you had to fight before being yeah. in the ring. <laughs> you know, the yeah, whole yeah. story. Mad, is, yeah, mad. Your whole story. Yeah, let me get back into that, actually. I'll, I'll say good. this now. Um, yeah, I think Travis, talk to us. Testing one, two, one, two, one, two. Good. Wait, let's just go back because I can't remember. There was a point that he was making before, and then it—that's it. Your phone when you said you was coming back to the um, you said it. I've been going yeah. to my home, to my old hood. I've been going down to my old youth club and that, and someone's on the phone. They'd be like, "No, nah, you know what? I'm gonna phone you back. I'm gonna phone you back." Oh, all right, what's going on? Like, people like to make you feel special, and yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I kept everyone at arm's length. Sometimes 
you can kind of like believe the hype, believe your own hype. And I think that's what happened, man. So I was thinking a second ago, um, there's something about you that there's, it's like you've been fighting before you even got into the ring. Like I've never, hearing, speaking to you now and hearing about just you even like being so close to ending up in jail. Mm -hmm. We don't know this person, you know. So I'm sitting here like, bro, I can't believe that this is this is the, all the facets to the character. Because even when um I've seen you like give a couple interviews and stuff, you're in a car and you're talking, your mindset seems completely different. Yeah. But you've probably always been this person from the beginning of time. Now, one thing that I've realized is that when you that what sells is lies like in this industry you got to know what sells and a lot as much as people say i'm dumb i'm a clown you know what i say juggling sells clowns go to work and they make their money we pay the clown <laughs> <laughs> that guy you gotta let that that guy that is in the clown suit take off all that clown costume is he getting money hell no so sometimes you gotta act a certain way and lies sell but when you come out and you be yourself and you be honest People don't want to see a humble, honest guy. That's from Hackney. That's black. Come on, man. He's trying to see him. They want to mm. still want to like so so sometimes you gotta say, you know what, this works for me. And I'm a, and I'm and I'm gonna do that. That's interesting. So the thing is, it's it's funny because you know, you say your love for boxing died in that Derry Matthews fight. Where is your love for boxing now? <laughs> Good question. Because <laughs> you're still an active fighter. Yeah, my love for boxing, I haven't got the passion like I used to. Like before, my whole passion was become world champion, become known, become famous, get as many followers as you can. Like that Instagram ad, I shut it down. I've got a new one now. I, st I started again, like this time mm -hmm. last year. I shut the whole thing down. I, I don't want to be a celebrity. I don't want to be famous no more. Now it's all about being smart, trying to make smart investments outside the ring. And I want to, I've got certain things that I want to make happen and boxing's my avenue to how I'm going to achieve these things outside the ring but at the same time boxing's what I do like now I've made sure that I'm bored every day I was in Dubai earlier this year for like seven days and I was living life a bit too much I said to myself I need to come back to England so that I can be hungry I can be bored in Dubai I'm not, I'm not bored everything's everything's here I'm living too much lifestyle mm -hmm. I need to be bored I need to seclude myself so all I've got is the gym so now that's what I've done the day I woke up, went gym, played PS4, went and then I went back in the gym. Tomorrow morning I got running, then I got gym again. So right now I make sure I'm so bored, all I've got is gym. And so that keeps me in there. So even though I'm not hungry to be a world champion like I was, I'm I'm still gonna perform even better now because I work even harder and even yeah. smarter now. Do you think you would have benefited from having a, a support system as you adjusted to the new levels that you were reaching in life? To keep you balanced and focused on on boxing and what needed what you needed to do, his support system as in as in like people around you, like your management, kind of just having a bit more of an involvement in your day to day, just to kind of keep you there. Do you reckon you would have benefited more from that, or do you reckon that it would have just happened regardless? Like it would happen regardless. Like I've got a family. I've got I've got two older brothers, and they saw all the mistakes that I've made, but they've allowed me to make all the mistakes that I've made because sometimes if I don't make that mistake now on a small level, I'm going to make it even bigger on a bigger yeah. level. So, you know, what? I remember when I fought Taylor, I went out to, to New York with this girl, New York, Miami. I spent 10K in like 10 days. I spent 10K in like, I spent 10K in like 10 days. And they saw me make all these mistakes, but it was like, there's another millionaire that's that's got 10 million in the bank and he spent 5 million on a girl in five days. So if you don't make the mistakes spending 10K now, how about if I ever make a hell of a lot of dough, I'm going to make that mistake then. I was like, mm. allow me to make those small mistakes now. And even though 10K is a hell of a lot, it's not It's not anything like Mills, what could, what, like what could happen. Yeah, yeah. Do you so, have um, a, Adrian Broner? And because he's, you're, the stuff you're talking about, he lives a lavish lifestyle. He's lavish. Yeah. He said yeah. the other day, if they keep me going, I will stay out of trouble. I need to yeah. fight as much as possible. Do you yeah. ever like look at him and almost understand or have some empathy? In I get what he got through because Adrian Broner made it at, at the start of his boxing career. 
being up in America, yeah, he was known from his first fight. He, he didn't right. have to go through all the phases that I had to go through. I had to start small. He started big and he made it to the top where he had everyone around him. And as soon as he lost and stuff, everyone backed off him. So he's like, so he has experienced everything that I have, but on a much bigger scale. Mm. And sometimes I feel sorry for him because I know what he's gone through and he, and he wants to get there again. So that everyone that doubted him, everyone that turned their back on him can, like, he can say, you know what, bang, I made it back there. And this time I'm going to be smart. But I don't think he is going to make it back there. I don't mm. think so. No, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's talk about um, the the situation where you ended up parting ways with Matrim and Eddie Hearn over the Liverpool incident. Yeah. Like, I remember seeing a series of your tweets and, like, the theme is, like, you were thrown under the bus. That's right? It, yeah. What do you mean by that? What let me tell you, exactly let, me, let me explain that situation. You guys got time yet to listen to this. Yeah, let's, go. let's go, bro. Oh, I go to gym one day, me and Ted Cheese with that at a good spa. I come home, I'm like, cool. Charlie Timms, my manager at the time, sent me a screenshot mm. that Eddie Hearn sent him. And he was like, get LD to go and send up a tweet down to Tommy Cole so that we can make this fight happen because it was a thing trying to make me against him. Mm. Me and Tommy Cole fight. So I thought to myself, you know what? Tommy Cole doesn't like the sun the newspaper because they exposed him a few years ago that he's been employing former drug dealers and stuff to work with kids in his gym. So what the son done, the son exposed him. So what? So that's why he don't like the son. So I said to him, once I knock you out, guess who my first interview is going to be with? The son, the newspaper. Mm. And that's mm, then, then, oh. everyone's gone on talking about, I'm talking about Hillsborough. Bro, I've never heard of the Hillsborough in my life. I'm from Hackney. I've never heard of an event that went down before I was born up in Liverpool when this guy's from Hull. Anyway, Tommy Cole's from Hull. He's not mm. from that city mm. where it went down. The guy's from Hull. It's got nothing to do with him. Nothing at all. So even if I had heard of he was brought, it's got nothing to do with it. He don't like the sun. Not... It's like it isn't that thing that went down up in Hillsborough, but it's all because of that the sun exposed him. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. the guy didn't yeah. like them. I got and caught in... You got so, caught up in that whirlwind. And so everyone made it seem like I'm talking for Hillsborough. So I had to go online. I had to, I had to go online. Wikipedia, the Hillsborough event. I thought, I'm like, okay, cool. 96 guys got killed up in Liverpool. But this guy from Hull, I'm still trying to understand what relevance, what I had just got to Hillsborough. But is it because I fought up in Liverpool and I, and me and that city have got such a feud mm. that happened years ago? That might be why. So that's what happened. So I remember, I'm like, cool. Eddie Hearn, Tony Simpson, and Charlie Simpson, they phoned me. They were like, OD, we do believe you. I, I I believe you 100%, but I have to make it look like you're being disciplined because I've got so many fans up in Liverpool and they come out to my shows and they buy tickets and stuff. So even though I do believe you, I, I have to take you off this show and I'm going to put you in a Dillian White bill in March just to make it seem as if you're being dealt with, yeah, even yeah, though yeah. I do believe you. And I was like, wait, so you so you think so you know that I'm actually innocent and you're still gonna abandon me publicly, but then accept me privately. Mm. That don't that don't mm. really make sense. So that's what I was like, damn. So anyway, a few things went down. Um had a meeting with MTK, thinking about joining MTK Global. I was in two minds about that too. And then um, you know, me and Eddie Hearn and Charlie Sims, Tony Sims, we all sat down, we had a meeting. And you know things went down. So then, so that's when they basically said to me, "The gym's open for you. You're will, you're more than welcome to come back to the matching gym." Charlie Sim said, "I'd like to continue managing you." Eddie Hearn said, "I'd like to continue promoting you." But I had I went there. I had I had to think about things. I sent Charlie Sims a text. I said, "I'm not going to be training with you, uh, and our, our contract's done anyway. So I'm not going to sign again with you. I'm not going to come back to the Sims gym. It's been nice working with you guys." Charlie Simmons wished me well. He said, cool, I wish you all the best in the future. Bye. I sent Eddie Hearn a text. I was like, Eddie Hearn, even though me and Charlie Simmons ended, I would like to continue working. I would like to continue fighting for Matchroom. You know what Eddie Hearn done? Eddie Hearn aired me. Eddie Hearn never responded to my text. So I thought, I thought, I thought, all right, that's, that's fine. I get it. Him and Sims are like that. They're, you know what I mean? They're like, yeah, family, yeah, yeah. Can I jump in, so, in there? Can I ask why you wanted to um, continue a relationship with Eddie but stop the relationship with Sims? Because me and Charlie Sims and Tony Sims are like that. I, slot, I see them every day. I meant to be more tight with them, but with Eddie Hearn, it's just 
business really. So I don't care if, if Eddie denies me publicly because it's just business with him. But with Sims, it's Jim. Hey. I know them. they're like my family, so you're meant to accept me publicly. It's not personal. I don't yeah, yeah. privately. Hey. Like they accept me privately, but not publicly. So anyway, so after Eddie Hunt aired my text, me and Frank Warren, we had a meeting. We agreed something. Then guess he sent me a text. Eddie Hearn. <laughs> and he said to me, hey, OD, if you're free, I'm at the match team office. Come and see me. And I'm sat in the car. I'm up in Tottenham at this time. I'm thinking, you know Eddie Hearn has his ways. If he's you down, you don't have to talk. He's going to get me, and I'm not going to sign to Frank Warren. Well, I said to myself, I'm not going to meet him. I sent him a text. I'm not free to come and meet you, but I can have a phone call. We were like, okay, cool, give me a call. I thought, let me, let me phone this guy. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not going to go see him. So he was like, you know what? I've been quite busy the past few days. That's why I didn't respond to your text. But, you know, you started with us a lot on Sky Sports and I feel like we made you the fighter that you are. Um, I'd like to offer you a free fight deal. The first fight will be on a Hey Bellew 2 card. Uh, no, the first one will be on the Dillian White card when he fought Joseph Park, I think it was. Next mm-hmm. one will be on, hey, on the Hey Bellew 2 card and we'll get you another one at the end of the year. The, he offered just a bit less to what Frank offered me, but basically the same amount. It's a bit less. And um, I was like, well, the ball's in your court. I'd love to continue with you. So I was like, but how about Sims? You, like, you know, I, I know you're cool. He was like, no, that's fine. I'll speak to Sims and he'll be fine. He'll be fine if you ask speak to Sims. All you've got to do is just say, yeah, I want to sign to you and we can do it. So I said, I had a think. Went, went home, me and my brothers had a chat. They was like, listen, it's up to you, man. Everyone, I, I'm, I'm trying to get advice from like, from everyone. Everyone mm. was like, the ball's in the court. I said, I was like, nah, this guy threw me under the bus. I'm not signing with him. I, so I went to Frank Warren. The next day up on Fight Hive, do you know what Eddie Hearn said? Uh, I feel like we had to let Hara go. He wasn't fitting our image, blah, blah, blah. I feel like we had to let him go. We had to drop him. Mm. I'm just thinking. I was like, yo, I've got a text on my phone right now of the free fight deal that I've been offered only yesterday. I'm thinking, I might just, I might just expose this guy. And I thought, nah, just leave it. Just leave mm. it. So that's what so that's what happened, and then I went to um, and then I went to Frank. But when you when you look back at that situation and how it played out and how you responded to things, do you feel like you did the right thing? In what in leaving Matchroom? In, in, yeah, in regards to leaving Matchroom, how things have played out, everything, all things considered, do you reckon you would have done the exact same thing again had you had the opportunity to change yeah, your mind? Yeah, because look what I've done since then. I'm the golden contract champion. You see the belts behind me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, of course I'll leave my crew, man. You know, ever since I left them, I've had to be a lot smarter with how I with 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 how I do things, with how I handle all my business outside the ring too. So it's made me a lot smarter. I might not be as known because the platform that you get when you fight on Sky, there ain't anything like it. So mm. the platform like that, I haven't had as big of a platform, but I've earned a lot more. Hundred percent, I've earned a lot. I've earned a lot more, a hell of a lot more now than I did when I was at my okay, crew. Okay, and also. Um, yeah, and also I'm a lot smarter, and I'm back where I was, back at top 15 in the world, WBC. Hell yeah. So, the, the golden contract. How did that feel being back in the, in a similar yeah. space as Eddie? Oh, no, it's just... Yeah, it's just, just gone still. <laughs> That's so jokes. Timestamp 47.54. I think if he comes out and then... Yeah. Leave a message to say, yeah, he'll yeah. come back in. Why would they guys? There you oh, go. There we go. Oh, yeah. just, you just went for a second. So, um, Travis, ask the same question yeah. again. So, I was saying with the golden contract, how did that feel to be back in a similar space as Eddie? Obviously, you're not with Matchroom, but the sky, mm-hmm. the sky situation, how, how did that feel? Uh, I felt normal to be honest. I never, well, actually, no, this is how I felt. I felt like these guys worked so hard, Tony Belly, and that they worked so hard to get me off Sky. And look where I, I am, back on Sky. <laughs> I, bet, I, bet, I bet they probably saw that. I bet that Tony Belly probably sat down and saw that. Damn. Because you, you and Tony Belly you had the maddest Twitter beef, bro. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I had advice. Is, oh, yeah. yeah. For a minute. Because we, we had can't to get the jokes off on there. We, we was like, bro, like, the weight difference. <laughs> Yeah, yes, you, know, you were talking as if you became a heavyweight overnight. Like you, you got like that. You were 16, 17 stone, and you was taller. <laughs> what was going on, bro? Because you had too. There wasn't too much of him. The listen, energy was nuts. Listen, when I got thrown under the bus, he was doing the most online. He was doing that. Can you guys see me? Yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
yeah, when I got fired on the bus, he was doing his, he was doing the most to like to try and get me kicked off Sky and dropped from match room. He was doing the best, even though he knew that I was innocent. So he had a fighter that I fought and he got beat. And I just sent a tweet, Tony Belly, and then I put a smiling face. Come on, that's it. Ain't that, ain't that, it's not that big. So he went on a bad one. And so he tried to say some shit and I said, and I, and I, and I, and I said some shit too. Like, I'm not no, I'm not no mug. And if you and us, and I'm like, if you see me out on the streets, I'm not no internet person. When you see me out on the streets, if you want to make a sign, we can make a sign. If you want, like, if you want to keep it online, we can keep it online. But keep out, just bear in mind, anyone, I told anyone, boxing fans, they can say what they want about me online. But when they see me on the streets, they all better show some respect. And they all do show me respect. As much abuse as, as I get online, when they see me up in person, I get nothing but love. So mm. everyone better keep it that way because I said, if you want to make it some, street shit I'm not going to be on the receiving end of anything and I still mean that to this day so how did that did you lot have a piece did you piece it up afterwards or is it just like just no nah, nah, you just left it like that I hear that <laughs> so listen I gotta ask you yeah this Tyrone McKenna you and him had got a little scrap in the car park mm. <laughs> and it was on IFL TV <laughs> bro yeah. That weren't real, was it? Let's be real. Let's well, let's not do that. That weren't real. I'll be honest, hundred percent. That was real. <laughs> no, 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 that's WWE. Uh, that was WWE. <laughs> and, and then as I got as I got home, I'm getting phone calls off of my friends. Ah, oh, see that thing that went down? Is it real? It looks a bit staged. And then I remember watching it back, back too, and I was like, it actually does seem a bit staged. And if I, if I'm watching it from the outside, I probably wouldn't think it's real myself. But it was actually real. I see Coogan drop the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even Coogan dropping the camera feels like he never drops the cam. You never drop the camera, bro. That's what I was like. That's really real. Yeah, but it was all it it was all his fault. Coogan planned it. So what happened? Yeah, Coogan said to him, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna gonna interview OD outside. After about five minutes, come out and let's see if we can make a little online beef happen. Like, let's like if you just go in there, talk some shit, we can have a little IFL beef." But obviously, I never knew. Cougar told him. He never told me. So I wasn't expecting it. Whole scene. But, but then the only mistake that he made is that he came a bit too close. He, like, the guy came up in my, like, personal space. And I'm, and I'm like, if you want to stand there and talk some shit, we can go back and forth. I don't mind getting a few views. I like for... I yeah, like yeah. for... Yeah. But then <laughs> he came up, like, he came a bit too close to me. So I had to, you know, I had to... I felt like I had to grab him. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my days, bro. Wait, on the last thing, um, because obviously we we seen a loss this week, and I know you were you were quite vocal on yeah. people writing off champions or writing off prospects. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to get because I watched the I watched that fight. We're talking about the Josh Kelly fight. I watched mm-hmm. that fight, and I'm gonna say where I thought about about what's next. I was thinking to myself, there's not enough ingredient in the... This is just me, by the way. There's not enough ingredient in him for him to... I can't see what he does next, personally. I know he can have fights, but I'm saying about... Right. In terms of power, in terms of power and stamina, that's why I had an issue with. And I was like, I don't know how you keep moving if you can't even... You, people are going to always approach you. In a ring, you're always going to meet pressure fighters. How are you going to... You're right. You're right because at this level he's at now, can you go back to English level and can if he fights them, beats them, everyone, everyone's gonna say, ah, oh, of course you're gonna beat these guys. You're like, cool. He fought hard, fight, beat. He got stopped. Now you're giving him bums again. So he can't fight bums, but he can't fight at the level that that he just boxed at because yeah. he'll get beat. So he's stuck in the middle, and that loss it was a real bad loss for him. I think he reckon he took the fight. A bit too early. He should have fought some other international guy like, that's ranked in the top ten, so making us bag him out in five or six rounds. Like mm. all these other guys do. The so guy took on a strong contender, and now all the hype that that all the all the hype that. They... Oh no! Internet is on a good part as well. Are well, yeah. you, you said he fought a strong contender. All the hype. Yeah, yeah he fought a good. Guy and all the hype that this guy had around his name is now all gone. It wasn't half gone, it's all mm. gone because mm. if you lose, it's fine, but it's about how oh. you lose. It's about how you lose, and a loss like that, it, it really 
took a lot out of him mentally. Imagine how much miles that it puts on your on, your, on the clock as well. Getting stopped like that, taking all those hits, it puts a lot of miles on your clock. And you can um, see that. All the hype, all the, yeah, yeah, like now, all the hype's gone. Where's he going next? Who's he going to fight? Conor Ben ain't going to fight now. Mm, yeah. He might fight Curry Matthew or someone like that, but mate, even that, hey, is, is, like, is a bit risky still. Like if we, if, if we, how would you have any? Do you have any advice for him? Because you know when you fought Josh Taylor, it was a it was a tough loss. Do you know what I mean? I remember watching that fight. I was in Amsterdam, bro, and I was I was pissed, bro, because I couldn't believe what was that. But how did you come back from that mentally? Do you know what I mean? How do you? I thought I, I had to fight again two and a half months after I fought Tom Farrell, another unbeaten fighter. I, I, I thought I can't go back to I like to fight in these bums because everyone's just gonna say I'm a hyped up, blah blah blah. You know what the shit they talk. I'm like I can't fight a bum. I I found another unbeaten fighter that's got a WBA in, international. You see up there, and yeah, yeah. man, I knocked him out. I took his after I took his belt. So after two and a half months, it was like oh these back in the mix. Though Kelly might have to do that, but the yeah. thing is that you take a risk like that, you could get beat again. And if I lost that fight, man, I would have been done. So this is so this next fight he makes that he takes, he's, he's got to be really smart about it because mm. uh, it's a risk either way because it could be done. I hear that. So what's so what's next for you, bro? Oh man, I got the mortgage I thought a few hours ago today. I'm still budget. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, secure in the future, bro. I like to hear yeah. that, man. No, um, but in regards to my boxing career, um. I'm spoken to MTK. Um, I've had a lot of stuff going on with like my coaching team, so I've had to make a few, a few. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you. You had a at one point. It just seemed like you were changing your coach, like on yeah. the trot. You had a guy who was training you, Moreno Boxing, Carlos Moreno. Moreno Carlos Moreno. What's the situation there? Because he's not a pro trainer, was he? But he was. I'm still a good friend of him, but yeah. he has got a pro license now. But he's he's, okay. he's a good friend of mine, but. That's something that we have to speak of off live because um you know, okay. that we okay. give information. But after Carlos Moreno was with him for one fight, then Angel Fernandez for one fight. No, no, Carlos for one fight, Miguel for one fight, okay. then Angel for one fight, then Will Jones and Kevin Mitchell for one fight. Now it's just Will Jones, Kevin Mitchell's gone. So I've had to deal with, you know, Kevin's not in camp now. That's what I've been dealing with over the past few weeks and a new training pattern I've just trained a new gym I may be doing a bit of strength work every now and again so I'm just sorting out all these stuff and then at the same time um I've got him to care in my case they're giving me a few options and I've got to choose my option what I want to do do I want to go out to the states and fight or I can stay here and the ball's in my core right now so I've got would you go out to you yeah is that something you're considering yeah sometimes it's good. I think, it's you'll, good. I think you'll be cool out in the states. It's, again, as you said, if we can get back to the OD, that's like saying the game needs someone like me. Yeah, I don't know where that's from. If we can get back to that guy and yet yeah. guys in the states, you, you, yeah, will, you will be a madness because everyone yeah. that goes over is mad humble. We never seen yeah. someone go over there and stick it on them, man. Stick it yeah. on them, man. You know, like we haven't seen that. So I don't. Sure. I know you're in decision making mode, but. Listen, yeah, yeah. I would like to see I'm, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just got I've got to think about over the next few days. Yeah. Mate, you know, going up there is long. Sometimes it's like easy to say, Yeah, America, America. Like, mate, yeah. it's long. Imagine getting on, I don't want to get on a flight to go out there to fight, go and get like acclimatized for like four weeks and then fight until my away from home. Mate, every time I fight here, I live in Essex, I sleep in my bed and then I drive and, and then I literally get in a car, I go to a I fight and I like it like that. I'm more comfortable. But going to the States is long, mate. And you know, before it would, it would have been my absolute dream. Yes, America. Yes. But, mate, now I'm just like, it's been these fights here, man. I uh, made his decision. Right, Travis, you just said it just now. He's made his decision, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, we know what you're doing, bro. You are still. <laughs> hey, a horror, bro. This has been a pleasure still. This has been a good conversation, man. Thank you, you guys, man. Man, let's definitely do this again, man. Hundred percent, one hundred percent. You're always welcome as well. And um, Travis, we have to go and train with Bahara one day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come to my gym. Come to my gym. Yeah, we'll come. We actually come. We should. We should just go, Travis, and just film. Yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah, come. 
Right. Brother, look after yourself. If you see Dubai, easy, yeah, if you just have a conversation with him, yeah, just tell oh, him. I'm, I'm, I'm tell gonna... you from now, he ain't coming on your show ever. <laughs> <laughs> if you see him in person, bro, if you see him up in, if you see him on the streets, don't be like, oh, Daniel, but I'm sorry. Listen, I'm, I'm telling you now, if you see him out on the streets, turn around and run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> 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 oh my god. He is what he is. Oh my god. Oh, Until uh, next week, bro. Look up, bro. Thank you guys. <laughs> Yo, people, thanks for watching the Undefeated Podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, leave a comment, and all that good stuff. Make sure and come back, bruv. Tell a friend, tell your grandma, tell your dad, tell everyone, tell your cousins. Let's go. <laughs>